Well, hey there, welcome back. Today, we're talking about the Cafe Sing Orca, and this one is gonna get a little strange. This is a flat burr hand grinder, which on the whole I find fascinating. There's not very many of them. There's one called the Orphan Espresso Apex, which has a ghost burr like this. And it's not even really a traditional hand grinder format like this, it goes on a table. Then you have the Fiorenzato Pietro, which I've also reviewed on this channel and I had kind of a bit of a mixed experience with it. If you wanna see a video on that, I'll leave it in the description. And the reason why there's not very many of them is because they're kind of hard to do well. And the reason for that is flat burrs, they're designed to spin really fast. The force kind of pulls the beans out to the side as they're being ground. And very often they're mounted vertically so that anything kind of left over will tend to kind of fall straight out. And hand grinders like this, they're just not designed in that way. So anytime I hear of a new one, I get very excited to see if finally maybe somebody has figured this out. So I was very happy to come across the Orca and I reached out to see if they would send me a unit to review and they sent said yes. So they sent one over, I started using it, I started digging in, and I'm just gonna put the cookies on the bottom shelf for you here. This is a good grinder, it makes a good cup, it's fun to experiment with, which is probably what you wanna know, and I'm fine to lead with that because I have a lot of things to say, and what I'm about to share with you is gonna get weird, like really weird. But before we get to that, let's look at the grinder itself. The Orca comes in this very traditional hand grinder form factor and sells for $269. And it also comes with these two 49 millimeter flat burrs. It's got this one, which is kind of a more typical flat burr design that you would see. And it also comes with this one, another type of burr called ghost burr. Now this type of burr is a little bit better suited to filter coffee. It can't go fine enough for espresso. If you try it, it's very likely it's just gonna gush out very quickly and give you a bad cup. So you have these two different burrs, two different experiences. Each one comes on its own carrier. Very fun to mess around with and experiment with. We're going to come back to these burrs in a minute because there's a couple nuances with them that I would like to share with you. But the way you adjust the grinder, the fineness and the coarseness is on this dial up here and you swap the burrs. It doesn't actually take very long by unscrewing them down here, just like you saw me take that one out. You unscrew the carrier here, switch them over. It takes about 90 seconds unless you're doing a speed run, which is pretty quick. So it makes for fairly easy swapping back and forth. The way you zero the grinder is not necessarily the most intuitive, but you set the setting to zero, tighten this all the way on the ghost burr, and then you, know, you go coarser from there and that's your zero point. On the flat burr, it's a more typical, you adjust it to the touch point on the grinder. Now the burr geometry itself is very unique. First, the size, 49 millimeters is kind of a weird size. You know, typically you would expect to see a 64 millimeter burr. That's kind of the standard. And they've gone with this size. You know, if you read up on their website, they say they designed the size specifically because people are used to this size form factor in hand grinders, which is true. And also because with the those larger 64 millimeter burrs, they're really hard to crank at slow speeds by hand, also true. Now, I have seen it said that because of the geometry of this burr, the smaller inner diameter, that these burrs actually have more cutting area than a 64 millimeter burr, and that is not true, either by my own math or Cafe Sing's website. It's actually a little bit less cutting area. Now, what they have done is they've provided with this kind of thicker outer ring here, a longer exit path just by, you know, a little over a millimeter, which they say makes for increased uniformity. Now, is that true? I would need a particle analyzer to know for sure. I'm going to say at best that's debatable. You know, particle uniformity comes down to a whole range of other factors besides just the length of the exit path. So I'm going to reserve judgment on that one. This kind of narrow opening in the center here combined with this pre-breaker here that kind of crushes crushes the beans up as they're on their way down to the burr, does make for a slower feed rate and easier grinding experience. So you can kind of see the design working to make it easier to grind by hand there. As far as cup quality goes, this is where we get into some trade-offs. 
It really is fun to compare these two different burrs on the same coffee, see how they respond differently. You know, you can do them both on filter, see how they differ. You have one that is very capable and fairly easy to dial in for espresso. However, with the Ghost Burr, it created a lot more fines than I expected, to be honest, for this type of burr. It is a very forgiving burr, but it is a bit of a flatter taste than I was maybe hoping for. I compared it against the Pietro Pro Brew Burr, which is a high uniformity burr. And, you know, tasting blind, I picked out the Pietro as my preference very easily every time. Now that grinder is a lot more expensive. I compared it to a couple conical burrs, the Easy Presso K Ultra, which is about the same price. And again, I really pretty strongly preferred the cups off of that on filter to the Ghost Burr. Then I compared it to a Time War C3 Pro, which is kind of upper entry level grinder. And again, that grinder got my preference over the Ghost Burr, just in terms of what I would look for in a cup. And comparing this Ghost Burr to that grinder in particular, and then choosing that grinder as my preference on filter, that was a little disappointing. Now again, this Ghost Burr is very easy and forgiving to brew with on filter coffee. So it does have that going for it, but I just found it a little flatter in the taste profile than maybe what I would hope for at this price. Now you do get two burrs though. And on this espresso burr, you know, you can brew filter with it. I actually preferred the Ghost Burr filter cups off of it. And on espresso, again, pretty easy to dial in. Maybe not quite as defined as I would be hoping for from a grinder at this price point. So I think what you're getting with this grinder is a very fun platform to experiment with, but not one that's going to really sing in any one area. Now there's a fair argument that at $269, that's a steep price tag to pay for experimentation and not top notch cup quality. And we're going to come back to that. There are a couple specific things that I do take issue with with the Orca. It doesn't come with a manual or any documentation, which is a little weird and given how novel the product is, makes for a pretty confusing user experience when you first open the box. A good illustration of that is right here on the bottom. You know, you have this little piece that is used to remove this burr. The problem is on any other hand grinder, this would be used to adjust the grind size. So if you're familiar with hand grinders at all, you get it, you open it up and you're wondering, you know, is this like a fine adjustment down here and a coarse adjustment up here? You know, how does that work? And in reality, it's just a lock. Like you just twist it on all the way. And it's even got this little arrow on it, which is pretty confusing because you would expect it to point at something, but it doesn't really mean anything, which seems strange given to what lengths on their website they say they go to about their intentional design philosophies. A couple other things, retention is a little rough, as you can see by these grounds just kind of strewn all over in front of me. When I was using the Ghost Burr, I find that they were the worst. You know, I would get up to half a gram retention, which is a lot for a hand grinder. You know, depending on how I would hold it, I could get that down to like 0.3 grams, still a lot. And on this burr, the Espresso Burr, I would still get like 0.2 to 0.3 grams retention fairly regularly. That's pretty high for a hand grinder. Also grinding with it, you know, you can get the majority of the grinding done in about 60 seconds when you're using the Ghost Burr, but then you're left just like spinning it around like for another 30 to 40 to 50 seconds. And you can hear like two to three beans bouncing around and they're trying to work their way through the burrs. It takes a long time to get them all out, even though you're not working that hard. So you can tell the design is not totally polished from an experience standpoint. On the espresso burr, you know, it takes around the same amount of time, but you do definitely feel like you're working for it a lot more. And up here, it's a little loose and it rocks a little bit. And from the fit and finish standpoint, it's all metal which is great, but it doesn't really feel like it has that super premium finish that you would start to expect at this price. So overall, we have a pretty fun platform to experiment with. Cup quality is good, but it's not outstanding. I certainly hoped for a little bit more there, but on the other hand, it is very forgiving. And while it's definitely not cheap, it is, as far as I know, probably the cheapest flat burr hand grinder out there, especially that gives you two burrs. So, you know, none of that is super weird, but things are about to get a little weirder.
And this is where I'm gonna say the review ends and the consumer education begins. The world of direct-to-consumer Chinese manufacturing, it can be a very difficult one to navigate. You have companies like Time More that operate a lot like a Western-style company. You have companies like Normcore that piggyback off of Amazon. You have companies like MHW3 Bomber selling coffee gear, and it just feels like it's a little bit hard to make sense of what their thing is. And then you have Mischief, who is pretty blatantly ripping off other people's product designs, offering them at cut rates, and kind of gleefully rubbing everybody's nose in it. And that's a whole other video. And then you have Cafe Sing, who is somewhat quietly selling a couple novel hand grinders and a scale. On their website, they go on and on. They have several different write-ups about their philosophy of design, why they did things the way they did, and how they ended up with these final products, and how everything is super intentional. In fact, they seem very proud of their product designs, and none of that is very weird. This is the weird part. For all their talk about intentional design philosophies and hand-building products for home baristas, I wasn't 100% sure that they had actually done those things because I found the exact same hand grinder on AliExpress under a different brand name and at a lower price. I almost left this out, but two seconds of Googling, if you're considering this grinder, is going to turn this up for you and you will see the POTU grinder for yourself. Now, mind you, it only has one burr, but there is a second POTU grinder that contains the other burr. And then I realized these things with the brand name on them are just rubber bands. And on the other grinder, it's just got a POTU band on it. Now, Cafe Sing is laser etched into the bottom of the burr carrier, but that's a pretty easy thing to do. So it's kind of weird. Now, I'm still not totally sure what is happening here. And somewhat surprisingly to me, Cafe Sing preferred not to publicly comment about this. Now, I left that option open for them. If they want to submit a response to this very confusing set of circumstances, I will leave it as a pinned comment. But for now, they said, we don't want to comment. Chinese manufacturing and product design is this very strange and somewhat nebulous world. You know, very often with product designers being somewhat faceless, their designs being bought by factories, mass produced in these crazy numbers, and sold to whoever wants to sell them under whatever brand name they want to sell them under. Is Cafe Sing the original designer of this grinder? Their website would certainly seem to claim that they are. And I think it's definitely possible that they are, but how do you know for sure? You can't. Likewise, they have this scale. It's got this, you know, silicone pad on it, kind of distinctive design here with these two buttons on the bottom. They call it the OWL. And on their website, they say, you know, we went through a very intentional design process, making sure this product was just the way we wanted, on and on. But then when I reverse image searched their product images, I found another Chinese manufacturer selling this exact same scale. So I asked Cafe about it. I said, hey, did you actually design this scale? And they said, yep, I designed it. And then I messaged this other company and I said, hey, I noticed this scale. I got one from this company called Cafe Sing. Who is the original designer of the scale? Did you design it? And they said they designed it. Very weird and somewhat disconcerting, to be honest. Who do you believe in this case? You know, you have several people claiming to have originally designed products that on paper are exactly the same. How do you make sense of what is real in this scenario? Now, fortunately, a couple days later, the second company reached out to me and said, hey, we need to clear some things up. We actually did co-design this scale with Cafe Sing, so that was great. And they have different features, which I had kind of made sense of from their different listings anyway, but still, they're exactly the same in their look, their feel, the shape of the buttons, the silicone mat here. It's this whole other world, and it really feels like it's the Wild West right now. I have a friend with some connections in in China and they actually messaged POTU about this and they said, hey, who designed this product? Is this your design? Would love to know. I saw another one that looked exactly like it. No response, blocked. 
And to me, that is a very strange response to somebody who you don't know, maybe up for buying your grinder and is asking a question anonymously, very strange response. So I'm left very conflicted about this whole market. You know, as a consumer, you probably want to pay what something is worth, but not more. And I hope certainly not less. But how do you determine what that actually is? My same source that messaged Potu and got blocked said that this grinder probably costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $40 to manufacture. Now we all know that when we buy something, we don't just pay what it costs to manufacture. You pay for distribution, you pay for marketing, you pay for design, you pay for all of these things and you end up paying more. Anything you buy is going to be marked up. The question you have to ask as a buyer is, who has marked it up by how much and why? Now, what is happening in this case? I don't think we can know for sure, but I think as a buyer, you need to weigh all of those things as possibilities and walk into a purchase like this or any similar one that you might make with your eyes open. So I wanna know your thoughts. What do you think about those weird POTU grinders hanging out on AliExpress? Have you ever taken a risk on an overseas product that you had no idea how it was gonna deliver before it arrived in the mail? What do you think about the Cafe Sing Orca? It's platform for experimentation, it's cup quality, the options of the two burrs, the form factor. I would love to know what you think. Thanks for coming on the ride. I hope your next cup of coffee is fantastic and we'll see you next time.